Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint Thunder Hammers. Thank you for joining me today, whoever you are, and welcome to this little video of mine where I'm going to be showing you uh, how I like to paint thunder hammers. Or more specifically, what I should say is uh, how I like to paint the the very top, the sort of the power element, the sort of the, the real sort of killy bit of the weapon. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to how I like to paint that because this series is called. It's a. It's a this is the first episode of a new series I'm doing, which is called Winter Weather Weaponry. So, what does that mean? Well, this is all stuff for my Space Wolves army, really. Um, my my Space Wolves army, I paint them in a sort of kind of the usual sort of Space Wolves fashion, with a with a bit of my own twist added to it as well. But I also like to give them a real sort of frosty, frosty look, and and uh, the, the bases are all icy and frosty as well. And I've got another sort of unique thing that I like to do to 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 make the army a bit more unique, and that's um, all the weapons that have that have got. Um, a feature of weather in their title, so thunder hammers, you know, thunder and lightning, uh, lightning claws for the lightning, frost blades, uh, storm shields, you know, like a st winter storm. What I like to do is I like to, uh, I've come up with a sort of way of painting the the, the sort of killy element of said weapon with um, with a scheme that's going to represent the weather feature. So. For frost blades, they're going to look like ice and frost, and storm shields. I like to paint them to look to sort of resemble a sort of wintry storm. Uh, and but today we're going to be focusing. We're going to have a look at thunder hammers, and so my sort of. Well, let me explain my my thinking behind this one for you. I'm imagining a, a thunderstorm, so dark black and grey clouds are the sort of you know that patchy mixture of greys and, and dark dark colours of the of the thunder of the clouds of the thunder the rain clouds um, I'm not going to do bolts of lightning but what I'm thinking is flashes of sort of lightning colour coming from within the clouds so so that's going to be the idea and that, that's what I've come up with and I'm going to share that with you today well it's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress but it's um, it's a beautiful day outside it's uh, it's lovely and sunny actually uh, I've got a nice cup of tea over there and I'm joined as always by my friend and co-host Norwegian troll Dimu so this is going to be nice Enough rambling then so let's get into this um, I've got a selection of paints up here as you can see uh, we've got um, a variety of greys we've got a bad and black here I might use some black uh, we've got Mechanica Standard Grey, we've got Eschen Grey, Dawnstone, Administratum Grey. Uh, I just happen to own all of these all of these greys. You could get away with one or two different greys, perhaps. Um, maybe if you've got a grey with a with a black or or a lighter grey or a white to tone it down. But I had all of these, so I've brought them all out, and we'll, we'll see where we go with those. And I've also got some non non oil here and some drooky violet and that's going to represent the, the flashes of lightning color coming from within the clouds and to begin with uh, I've got a thunder hammer here a space wolf one I've already primed it sprayed it uh, I used army painter uh, gun metal was the color it's a good place to start here we are then so we've zoomed in and we're gonna get started here we're gonna start with the Mechanica standard gray so we're going to load some of this onto my wet palette here, and we're just going to apply this all over, all over the, um, all over the head of the hammer. Make sure it's a nice, thin, smooth coat. First, there's a bit of a, there's a, like a skull on here, like an ornamental skull. I'm going to paint over that as well. I'm going to sort of make it look like that it's all, it's all part of the same piece, like it's all been carved out of stone, maybe. And, uh, so there's no problem there, but this is the first thing we we're going to do. So apply that all over the top. Just thought I'd zoom in a bit more, give you a bit of a better look at this actually. There we go, I've applied some Mechanica Standard Grey. Nice thin smooth coat and I'm going to let that dry. Maybe top that up with another one. And then when that's dry we'll move on to the next step. So that's a couple of thin coats of Mechanica Standard Grey, now nice and dry. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to bring on the, bring out some non-oil. 
And we're going to load some of this on the palette. We're going to just give this a nice, nice wash all over. Help sort of pop all those details out. On the sort of, sort of etch sculpting of the, of the hammer. Well, it looks like, it does quite look like it's, it could have been carved out of a piece of rock. So, um, quite like that idea. So we'll just wash that all over with some Agrax. Try not to flood it too much. I've got, I appreciate I've got rather, rather too much on the palette there, but yeah, you know, just uh, bring all those details out. Oh yeah, so I've loaded that up with some wash. Just letting it dry here. Adding just a little bit more into these nooks and crannies. Just let it sort of flood and sit into those gaps, really, and make them nice and dark. And then as it's drying, just keep an eye on it for um, any big sort of blobs and puddles. Just dry out the brush and soak them up, move them around. And there we go. So we'll let that dry and we'll move on. There we are then, so the wash is now nice and dry and you can see it's shaded nicely and accentuated those details lovely. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is create that stormy, that sort of storm cloud, thundery, rain cloud kind of effect. So the way we're going to do this, I've got some tissue here and I've got what's called a, a stippling brush, which is like a very, it's quite a stiff sort of bristle, sort of flat end, edged brush here. And we're going to be sort of, how this works, we're going to get some paint on this and it's more of a case of just dotting and stabbing, stippling, that's what it's called. So, we've got a selection of, we've got our selection of greys and first one we're going to start with is, is the Dawnstone. So maybe have a little look at some thunder, thunderstorms and Grey, dark, blacky clouds on the line. Have a little look at it. just for a bit of inspiration before we try and create this effect. And so I'm going to load up this brush. It's almost, it's not quite dry. You want it to be able to, but it, but it's also not not too wet. So you want want the paint to be able to sort of pop off when you stab the bristles like so. You don't want it too wet, but if it's too dry, you probably it's probably take you for years because it because it's very stiff these bristles. But so here we go. We're going to start just poking this, creating that stippled kind of effect, and kind of I'm, I'm being. Being cautious and being a bit sort of sparing at first, you can always build it up, but it gets a bit tricky trying to take it off. So, I'm sort of creating these clusters of, of stippled stabs. We run to the other side. Sort of see how it goes, really. There you go, so you can see the kind of effect that we've achieved here. It's a sort of patchy, a sort of patchy stippled effect there. Looks nice. So we're gonna, that was the Dawnstone, we'll do that again. Bring out the Administratum Grey here. We're gonna be a little bit more sparing this time. We don't want it to be too light, we don't want it. But, um, just enough. And what I'm going to do is with this, I'm going to focus on the on the lighter grey sections that parts that I've already done, and I'm going to lighten those bits up just in places with some more with a lighter tone. Yeah. I'm going to try and leave sort of areas of darker, areas of lighter. Make sure that's not too wet. You can always just scrub it off with your thumb if you get a bit, it's a bit of a damp bit there. Like so. 
So I'm working on lighting up some of those lighter areas. You know where I went with the Dawnstone first. But leaving some of the patchy darker bits as well. As you can see like so. So you get this sort of blend really of these different areas of lighter and darker grey. Like so. So I'll do a bit more of this. So we've applied some administratum grey there, the same technique. Uh, what I've actually got here, I'm going to bring out a bit of Corax white. I didn't, I didn't bring that out at the start of the video, but I'm going to just add a very, very small amount of this. It's a nice white, this, because it's quite sort of off-white. It's quite sort of grey in colour, so it's going to work nicely. So I'm going to scrub a bit of that onto the, onto the tissue, and I'm working quite a lot of this off really don't want much of this on at all but just enough and I'm going to apply this on just some of the lightest sections again that we've done just to create just to bring those up a bit it wasn't quite as light as I wanted it to be in those areas so we're going to just just have a bit of this on there just on those lighter bits and spreading it out. And it's, those bits are a little bit, maybe a little bright at the moment, but what we can do is what we're going to do, we're going to go back on with a darker grey. I'm sort of building up the layers of grey, starting with Mechanica Standard. Which is pretty dark in itself. Layering it up with some lighter tones, creating that sort of patchy stippled effect. And then what we're going to do, we're going to bring out some Baden Black, because this is a thundercloud. It's supposed to be quite dark, so I'm going to scrub a bit of this into the brush. We don't want this too dark, uh, too bold, I mean. So just make sure it's not you're not overdoing it on the brush. And we're going to cover this up again. Take a look at some pictures of, of some clouds, get a bit of inspiration. But I'm going to start covering some of this up with black. And again, you don't want it too wet because it'll look kind of weird, sort of streaky. We're going to add some black onto this. Really trying to create a sort of patchy, sort of cloudy kind of feel. And a bit of that here and there. There we go. I think that's working all right. So I did a little black. I think it's looking okay. And might just bring out a little bit more grey again. I'm going to go for Dawnstone. Put a little bit of that on. Just uh, where I think maybe I've gone a little bit heavy on the black there. I'm just being gentle, just jotting a bit of this here and there. loads just a little bit and there we go so I think that's looking all right all right there we go so I've just been playing around with it a little bit trying to trying to see how we how, how well we can do here and yeah I think I'm all right I think I'm pretty happy with it so I've tried to I suppose the general idea has been working out sort of swirling areas of of darker bits there's like a dark bit here which goes underneath there around the top there lighter up there here we've got a bit of a dark bit that going going up the top there lighter underneath so it's trying to sort of create this sort of swells so it's kind of hard to explain but um, just try and have a look at some pictures I guess and um, try and get sort of inspired and it's I mean it's gonna 
to to look if you looked at it and said I don't think anybody would look at that and say that's a cloud but um I'm trying to create this sort of almost like a sort of spiritual inspiration from that weather feature you know so it is this sort of mixture of, of a frothing mixture of colors and and grays and I like it well, that's just how I do it and so if you've gone a bit heavy you can here and there you can just run a little bit of wash back into those gaps into those features uh, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some flashes of lightning some of that some of that color coming through so to finish off the thunder hammer we're going to add a little bit of drooky violet shade this is going to be the sort of power element really of the of the hammer and it's going to resemble the perhaps flashes of lightning coming through the clouds so we're gonna first off we're gonna put that heavier on the edges, on the on the hitty bits rather of the of the hammer. Just put some of that over the top here. Smooth that over and around the other side. So that bit will be nice and purple, and bring that over the edge here. Yeah, but I'm going to take a little bit of water and just just dilute that down a little bit, so it's not as strong towards the middle. So the strongest part of the of the element will be on the ends, like so, and then a little bit in the middle, but not loads, just enough. This is why I dilute it down just to. Make it not quite so strong. There we go. So let that dry. See how it looks, and if you feel like you want to add a little bit more, go ahead. Or um, well you could just leave it at that. So uh, I'll let this dry, and then then I'll have a little look. And there we go. Then so the Druky Violet is dry, and. It's got that purpley tinge to it now, which kind of, which is the the power element, I suppose, of the um, of the thunder hammer, and it's kind of drawing on that maybe the flashes of lightning. What you can also see is, I actually went and did a few little, just really watered down, little blobs of white, the corax white again, really watered down, um, and put some of the purple over the top of those. You can see little flecks of them there and there. And that's again kind of like little little flashes of light uh, from lightning, and then the purple over the top. And there we go. So there, so there it is. That's um, that. That's just how I like to paint thunder hammers. Um, taking taking an, an inspiration from from the weather element, which is thunder clouds with flashes of lightning. So there we go. Well, and there we have it then. So that was the first instalment of Winter Weather Weaponry, where in this episode I showed you my my approach to painting to painting thunder hammers with a with an inspiration from thunder clouds. Do keep a lookout for some other instalments in this series. I'll be showing you my approach to painting storm shields, uh, frost blades, and lightning claws too. I certainly hope you've enjoyed the video today, and if you have, then a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated. And if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the Frozen Fortress, then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. And once again, whoever you are, thank you very, very much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard, that's Dimu, and for now, keep it frosty.